hi everyone um long time no see um hi hello my name is melanie also known as cozy cardigans on instagram and on ravelry and i am the owner and dyer for big little yarn co and you can find me at big little yarn co on instagram and big little yarn .com. um hi it's been a while um life has been a little crazy these past couple months just because of all all the work that i've been having to do i had wholesale orders i've had your personal orders so i recently had a shop update maybe about four or five weeks ago so not not super recently but I finally finished dyeing all the yarn, finished packing, finished shipping, so that's all gone to you. So if you've ordered something, thank you so much for your support. It means so much to me. Um, I was so worried that when I moved to Japan, like, people would be really put off by shipping. And some, some of you are, which is totally understandable. Um, shipping to U.S. and Canada has been kind of a headache of COVID. Um, the Japanese post office has restricted shipments like package shipments to the U.S. and Canada and some other few other countries so I've been having to use like a UPS type of uh, company so shipping is a little more expensive right now but hopefully when COVID goes away things will get back to normal and shipping will be much more affordable for you all um but anyways in the meantime thank you so much for your orders um yeah just thank you um for making my life happy like i don't know i'm i'm honestly living the dream so um for those of you who are new here i know there's some new subscribers that haven't seen any new videos for a while um thank you for subscribing even though i haven't been posting um so i'm again i'm melanie i live in japan um in hyogo japan with my husband tim um we live about 15 minutes away from osaka the city and maybe about 20 30 minutes away from kobe um, so, yeah, uh, we recently just moved here in January, so if you haven't seen any of, so, like, my, my I think my past two episodes are me, like, kind of talking about it, and I, I have also, like, done, like, a setting up my bookshelf, yarn shelf video, um, if you want to check that out. Sorry if you hear the rain, it's raining like crazy, it's raining all week, um, which is super cozy for me, um. I love the rain. One of the many reasons why we decided to move here, um, I'm originally from Southern California. Um, we lived in LA for I think about three to four years. We owned a mid-century modern um, antique furniture shop online and um, it never rains in LA like no one, I don't think I, I, don't, I didn't own an umbrella when I lived in LA. Um, so it's weird having to one of the things that we had to get used to was looking at the weather weather app every day because to see like what the weather will be the next day because back in LA like it's just we know it's just gonna be 75 80 the next day definitely no rain so I never really bothered to check what the temperature or like what the weather was like but here I have to double check like what is it gonna rain tomorrow it's gonna be really windy what's it gonna be like um especially because um another thing that you have to get used to moving here from the U.S. at least for me was the fact that um we don't use dryers here there are like clothes dryers but normally like the average household, everybody pretty much in my neighborhood at least, um, we all dry our clothes, like hang dry it, like no one really dry, tumble dries, so you really do have to pay attention to the weather, like, because today, if I did the laundry, everything will still be wet for the rest of the day, so, um, 
on rainy days you can't really do laundry unless you can get out like inside the house which some people do but I don't really do that anyways why am I talking about laundry um this is a knitting <laughs> and crafting channel um I knit I do not crochet I do sometimes for like um, I've had like crochet projects that I've never finished. I spin, I dye yarn, obviously. Um, but yeah, we have a lot to catch up on. I haven't talked to you all about anything. Um, if you don't follow me on Instagram, then you have no idea what I've been working on. So, let me, I got a notebook to be ready. And then right now I just realized that I didn't even bring like my finished objects. So um, there you go. Not ready. <laughs> um, I also talk about reading a lot. Um, I usually talk about that at the end of the video. So if you're just here for the knitting crafty stuff, then that's cool. And then if you're here for books as well, then stick around. But um, well, the rain's really loud, sorry everyone so let me grab my finished object because I forgot it all right I'm back I'm back sorry sorry so I have two finished objects I haven't been able to knit as much as I wanted to just because of work so things have been really slow going yes I still have a million whips but I've kind of been working on like a few, select few at a time so that I don't, you know, keep adding to the whip pile. But anyway, so this is my first finished object. Oh, I should have worn it, but it's so hot. It's been getting really hot here. But um, this is the Alden Pullover by um, Jennifer Steingass. So... I love it. It's, let me just, I'll just throw it on really quick for you. This is my first Jennifer Steingass um, pattern that I've worked. And this is how it looks like. It's got this lovely yoke. Oh, I love this yoke so much. Oh, I think I put it on backwards, huh? But, um,. As you can see, still have not weaved in all the ends, mostly because they're so wispy. Like, I kind of just like been tucking it in. So this is backwards, but I mean, it looks the same either way. It's just the back has the short rows. So it so looks a little higher collar than it should be. But yeah, I love how the yoke looks. So this yarn I used... I still have quite a bit of yarn left. I made sure to buy like another extra just because I wanted to be a good knitter and swatch and everything. But in the end, I still have a ton left. So this is Olcentrum. This is a Swedish um, unspun single ply yarn. So what that means is, for those of you who don't know, and this is the same brand, this is just... Um, the dyed version so it has like a blue to yellow gradient which is how I got this gradient here and then I just made sure to just use the blue parts for the sleeves so that they match um, so unspun single ply yarn is just pretty much looks like this so it's very not thin well I guess thin it's fingering weight um, very wispy, very delicate. So if I went ahead and just pulled it apart, it just pulls apart like that. The thing is, is that when you knit it up, the twist that naturally goes into your yarn as you knit um, strengthens the fibers to create this very wooly, rustic, fuzzy fabric. Um... For those of you who have sensitive skin, it might be too itchy for you. You might have to wear something underneath. I'm going to take this off. It's so hot. So you might have to wear something underneath 
or else it might be too prickly. Um, I'm pretty good with uh, rustic, quote unquote, rustic types of yarns. Um, so I, I wear it like maybe like a tank top just as like an undershirt or something and then I'm like good to go. But my husband, he's pretty sens he has pretty sensitive skin. Like he can't wear like alpaca even. It that makes him itchy, so um he definitely can't wear something like this. But yeah, it's so warm. And it's like the fiber or like the yarn that you use is so wispy, you don't think it's gonna hold that much heat, but it's actually really warm and cozy, um, which is not a great thing to wear right now because it's getting really hot, but I'm definitely very much looking forward to wearing that during the winter um, when it gets colder again. But I, I have worn it when it's like um, chilly at night. Um, it's still pretty nice. It's a great all around kind of any time of year when it's chilly sweater. Um, so yeah, I finished that. The no mods really um I definitely made the sleeves I tried to make the sleeve shorter so um it's kind of hard to tell how or like when to stop knitting this um main color because you have this color work bit at the end so I tried to kind of like calculate how short I should make the sleeve so I pretty much um, stopped knitting after all the decreases and then just went straight into the color work but it still ended up a little long like um, it's long enough for me to kind of like it's kind of like this long like half my palm so it's not it's not super long like I'm glad it's not like covering my hand or anything it is a little long for me but that's not really a problem and it's pretty cozy like to keep your hands warm um, when you're if you're walking outside at night or something so yeah that's pretty much it and then um okay another thing that I kind of modified was um so the pattern starts off from the yoke sorry I've like lost my train of thought starts off at the yoke and then you knit down but the thing is is that the pattern hem is uh, quite short I think it's only I don't I'm not sure how she told us to how the pattern said it but it was only like maybe half an inch of a hem and so the problem with such small hems is that if you don't do something to offset the change in gauge between the stockinette body and then the ribbing hem, it kind of flips like outwards like this. I don't know if you've ever seen that happen to any of your projects, but it kind of flips out and it's really annoying. The thing is about this yarn is that since it's so delicate, it's really hard to... Um, it's hard to frog so I was thinking I was wondering what I should do because the flipping was driving me crazy like it would just like flip a little outwards and it was just like <sighs> so annoying so I after I finished everything else I was just kind of thinking about it and then I googled some stuff and then some people um suggested doing just picking up the end um just picking up the ribbing at the end and then knitting another knitting the same amount and then doing a fold over so that's what I did so I did a fold over hem so it's a little thicker so you can see that I um, I think I crochet I used a crochet hook to um, stitch it closed so it's a little th the hem is a little thicker than I would like, but it did folding it inwards, offset it, it flipping it outwards. So once I blocked it, the hem sat quite nicely. So that fixed the problem. Um, some really nice followers also mentioned the fact that you can um, slip 
your knit stitches before you start the ribbing so at the last round of your body row slip your knit stitches and then purl or slip your knit stitches and then purl oh wait so that would be your first so on your first round of your ribbing slip your knit stitches purl your purls and then um, it should offset that flipping problem so that's that's one mod that I it was more like a fix, like I didn't want to have to do that, but I mean I'm glad it's like sitting nicely now. So you could tell that it's like a little thick down here, but I think I think that's just me. I, I mean I could tell that I, it's thicker down there. So yeah, that is, this is my first sweater of this year. I wish I have knit more, but moving to another country, dyeing a lot of yarn, you know, it just takes up a lot of time, so... Um, but yeah, I'm super happy with how this turned out. And I have so much, I still have like a plate and a half left of the gray yarn. So I'm wondering what I should do with that. I'm like, I kind of want to hold it together with mohair and make something fuzzy. I don't know. Still thinking about it, but yeah, I still have that. So, Alden by Jennifer Steingast. Very nice. And then also, okay, so I've worn the socks like multiple times, so I'm sorry that they look a little ratty, but these are my first socks that I finished. I don't think I've shown it to you all yet. I know I posted it on Instagram. So this is the, um, well, I kind of just made up my, it's just my usual like vanilla sock, um, recipe that I use. Um, and then the pattern on top is just a regular, I think I did seed stitch. Yeah. Just regular seed stitch. Nothing, nothing fancy. Um, the main yarn is, uh, First Frost by Nordic Yarns. Um, she makes really, I love her, I love her self-striping colorways. Like, they're all so good. Um, so this is her first frost colorway, so the color's kind of, kind of blown out, but it's got like teal blue, brown, gray, yellow, so it's very cute. And then the contrast heels and toes are my own, um, shoyu colorway from my shop, and it came out pretty good. Um, so, yeah, just, just regular socks. I wear them all the time. Um, nothing, nothing, nothing new, nothing special. Just my regular sock recipe. So those are the only two things that I finished, like, this year. I feel like, I think I've casted on, like, maybe four or five things, and then I've only finished two, which is fine. It's not a race, you know? No one's comp competing. Um, but I feel like I should have knitted more, but I know I knit a lot. It's just, I have a lot of stuff to knit. So whatever. So anyways, that's it for finished objects. Um, whips. I have a lot. So the first thing, let me see here. So I'll show you, let me take out my stuff here. So my first thing that I will show you is this is the summer olive top. So I'm not sure if I'm able to see. So this is like a vest and then we so top down vest. It's got these really lovely like cable pattern on the shoulders currently knitting the body and then it's on the back it has this really nice cable spine um, I'm in the middle of the body I had to pause this because um, I ran out of yarn and this is my own I'm using my own Big Little Yarn Co um, 
This is one of my newer bases. This is the Cordale DK base um, in Bramble, which is, I think Bramble might be my favorite tonal out of all of my tonals. I think it goes with pretty much anything. It's this um, very warm purple brown color. Yeah, so I'm, I'm in the middle of the body, but I ran out of yarn. I think I need one more skein. But I think I'm, I'm going to dye two more skeins and then kind of make it a little longer. I kind of want it to be more of an oversized vest situation. I've been kind of into vests lately and I think it'd be really cute. Um, like a, something I throw on top during the summer. Like if I'm, I don't know, going to the combini at like really late at night to grab a snack like I could just throw this on top and it'll be cozy but not too hot because it won't have sleeves on it so yeah it, it does have um, a button closure so I'm gonna have to choose buttons later which will be exciting but um, it's where the my little stitch markers are will be where the buttons are but yeah so this is on pause I'm pretty much knitting exactly two pattern, no mods. Just really simple stockinette. I am um, uh, alternating skeins so you can kind of see so that I could prevent any color pooling. I love how hand dyed yarn looks in stockinette. It's just so nice, especially tonals. I don't know. I just really love that. Anyway, so that is that oh it's uh did i say the pattern name the pattern name is summer olive it's by Rie. um she's covive on instagram she makes wonderful patterns i love all of her patterns um so yeah that's that nothing not too much to say I st yeah i was kind of like going strong on it and then i realized i didn't have enough yarn so i'm gonna have to make that um next one this is my current so i try to have like a color work project and then like a not super difficult project like side by side so that um well not side by side but you know what i mean so i have something that's like challenging and then something that's not too challenging so this is my challenging project oh it looks so good so this is the sleeve of the, this is Marit by, who's by Kristen Drysdale. And I'm knitting the sleeve, for, it, it says to knit the body first, but I didn't want to um, knit a swatch. So I decided to just knit the sleeve and make that my swatch. Um, so I'm going to knit one more. I know that the... I know that this will fit widthwise, I just need to know like the row gauge. So, cause I'm, I, I do want it to be a little more oversized. So let me explain. So, Marit by Christian, Kristen Drysdale. This is how the pattern looks so far. Yes, it is lovely. It is so cute. I cannot wait to wear it. So this is how it looks on my arm, if you can imagine it. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be so cute. So anyway, so I'm using um, Jameson Shetland. The pattern calls for three colors, but I'm using four because I wanted to. Because um, I looked at like the projects pages on Ravelry and some people have used four and I saw that and I was like, yeah, I'm going to need four. Also, it's a great excuse. So then um, the main color is, and I'll list all the yarn info down below if you did want to recreate my color combo um but the main color is 106 musket it's this very beige gray oh so no so so this is like a cool gray i guess this is like a warm beige gray if you know what i mean like it's a on the warmer side um so that's the main color then the three contrast colors are, let me see, I think I wrote it down. So this is Sphagnum. 
It's this really lovely dark mossy green color. Um, yeah, I love that. And then this is Atlantic, which is like a like an indigo blue, dark navy indigo blue. And then this is Turf, which is a darker teal color. And yeah, this is how they look together. So good. Very exciting. It's been so much fun to knit. Um, this is definitely like a slow going type of knit, I want to say, because obviously if I screw up, I'm going to have to go back and re-knit it again. Um, I am knitting it. So the pattern calls for a size one or yeah, size one on the ribbing and then size three, I believe, in the main fabric. I decided to use a size two in the ribbing and then a size four in the main fabric. Um, why? It's because I can't find my size three needles. Um, and then also I was kind of thinking about it and I did wanted it to be a little more on the oversized kind of side. Um, so I didn't really mind using a size four. I usually use size four for fingering weight anyways. So I was like, I'll just do that. Um, so yeah, I've just been using a size four. It's been Obviously, it's bigger than what it should call for, which is why I need, like, the row gauge. Um, just so that I know how long to knit the body as well. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a nice, like, oversized color work cardigan. Um, what else have I been doing? Oh, I've, for the first time, so this is my first time knitting color work. Well, no, not not my first time knitting color work on the sleeves, but the last time I did this, it was for my, oh, what's it called? My twigs. Um, my twig sweater by Junko Okamoto. And I knit the sleeves too tightly that time because I didn't know that you could actually flip your sleeve inside out and knit inside out. Like, I didn't know that was a thing. So if you're not, oh, here's the floats, by the way, if you're into that. Very fun. Here are my ends. Um, I try to weave in the ends as I go with the Weave and Steven method. So, um, so yeah, I knit the, I knit the sleeve inside out so that it won't be super tight. Um, and it's been working really well. Um, so if you don't know, if you're not familiar with color work, um, knitting color work on the body is, I don't want to say, I mean, it's simpler than having to knit it in something small circumference like a sleeve because when you knit color work, the floats tend to cut the corners. So if you think of the circle, the floats kind of cut that corner and therefore tightens up that circumference little by little as you knit it. So in the end, you kind of end up with this very tight, very ungiving tube, pretty much. So to offset that, you flip whatever small circumference thing you're knitting inside out so that the floats don't cut that corner. It's hard to explain with words, but when you knit with it, it makes sense. So, um, so yeah, I didn't know that was a thing. So I'm knitting this for the first time inside out and inside out, it literally, it's, it's literally just like, if I wanted to flip it right side out, I just knit as you would regularly. Um, I do that for, whoa, the rain's really coming down really hard. But I do that anyways for just the, um, sorry, I hope the rain isn't too annoying. Um, 
but I do that anyways. Reg I knit regularly for any rows that just have the main color and then I flip it inside out and then you pretty much knit regularly like you don't purl no purling needed you just pretty much knit like looking at it kind of peeking behind this part so that's pretty much just um, what knitting inside out means you're not it's not that you're going purling inside out or mirroring or anything like that you're literally just knitting it like inside out so yeah so learning lots of new things, which is fun. Um, but yeah, this is what I have so far. I'm gonna, so this is one um, repeat, and then I'm gonna do one more repeat. And then I think I need two more repeats actually, so three total, and then I'm gonna block that, see how long that is, and then do the math for the body. Um, there are steaks involved in this cardigan, so you knit the body in the round, and then you steak it, and that'll be my first steak. Very exciting. Very scary. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it for those. Um, socks. So socks are my train knitting. So for my train knitting, I currently have these guys. So I'm knitting with my size one Haya Haya little short needles, so little baby needles, and um, I was using them before, but um, I wasn't using, I wasn't knitting Continental back then, and it's very diff, I feel like for me, at least it was very difficult to knit with these little needles um, as a, we call that a picker, a thrower using your right hand so after like last year um, I switched to Continental and it's been going really easily and smoothly and quickly um, so this is the Squad Gourds colorway by Nomadic Yarns yet again um, the colors are being blown out a little oh there it goes so it's super cute it's pink like lime green dark green yellow and orange and then the contrast heel this yellow here is my own tamago colorway um so it the yellow just goes perfectly with it so yeah just knitting knitting this up this is just again another um my basic like regular stock not stock in it vanilla sock recipe and then all i did was just um i'm just doing broken rib stitch for the leg and then the top of my foot so yeah there's nothing much to say it's just really um like an easy train knitting thing when i go out i just carry this with me and then i carry it in my little little fox project bag goes in here so yeah very nice that's what I've just been working on um and then my last knitting type of um whip I just started it maybe a few days ago as a little um, so I usually shop my shelves like after every update because I can't resist. Um, so I had four tonals available last update for my Sakura collection, which was Sakura, Haru, Bramble, and Matcha. So I was wondering what I could do with those four because those four together just look so good. And um, the color quadrant top by James and Watts was released so I was like that's it that's what I'm gonna make so that's what I'm making so I finished the front half so again this is the color quadrant top by James and Watts so the pink is Sakura the light mint is Haru and then there's Bramble again my go-to and then this is Matcha so I finished the front half and I'm currently working on the 
back half still just like a little strip um, so this is a pattern that um, utilizes intarsia so it's not the same as it's is it a type of color work I'm not sure if it's in the same category but what you do is you kind of link the two colors together and then it creates these different colored blocks so it's super fun if this is my first intarsia project if you're new to intarsia I do recommend this pattern it's a great way to get to know how that um, join works and then you could go from there like I know shiny superhero uses intarsia in almost all her patterns and her patterns are amazing but also they're kind of scary for intarsia newbies like me so I'm really glad to be able to like kind of practice on something smaller um, simpler it's just like one line here and then I think in the back yeah in the back it's pretty much the same um, but the blocks are placed differently um, so yeah that's fun I'm probably gonna keep this as a tank top so that I could like layer things with it but yeah super cute um this is again with my own yarn this is on my non superwash merino base so this is non superwash it's super soft it kind of feels cottony to me but like in the good way like I don't know if you felt very soft cotton it, I don't know it like merino doesn't seem like a summer wear but when I felt it I was like I'm pretty sure it would work out just fine so yeah I'm pretty excited about that um this time I'm not um alternating skeins or anything and there's no not not much any color pooling so yeah that's nice um and then the lighter colors obviously you can't really tell if there's any pooling or anything so yeah that's that oh, it's gonna look so cute um so this is like my project that i this is my mindless knitting project because it is pretty much just stockinette um you just have to pay attention to when the colors switch but that's pretty easy to do and um yeah so that's that's that and then I do have one more whip which is not knitting it's sewing so I like to hand sew I don't own a sewing machine I left my sewing machine back in the US but um so I'm hand sewing this linen top it's long sleeves I have yet to oh no I, I connected it so I think I just connected the sleeves it's this like it looks really bright on camera but it's actually a darker orange I think the color is getting a little blown out it's a long sleeve 100% linen shirt it's all hand sewn so let me show you what it looks like on the inside So I, I have a bunch of threads still, but um, so all of this is hand sewn. I use 100% linen thread. Um, I pull it through beeswax to make it um, sewable, I guess. Um, all the stitches, all the ends are whip stitched down so they're hidden inside. So there's no like um, random ends just floating around. So same for that. And then I have like a split hem going on. So yeah, this is slow going. You know, I've been working on this project for a while. Obviously hand sewing takes a lot longer than regular sewing, but I really love the tediousness of it, if you know what I mean. Like you could kind of just start getting lost in the little stitches that you make. Um, so I've just been tinkering along for this um, every day. I just need to, the only thing is I just need to do the collar and then hem the sleeves and the body. 
and then I'll be done. So almost there. Almost there. Um, so yeah, that's all my whips. Uh, acquisitions. Yeah. So those are my whips acquisitions. So I do have like two, not really acquisitions, but newly formed things like um so i had so it's kind of in this like weird form right now but this is um palette yarn that i had since last year it's just this mustard yellow color and i have like a sweater quantities worth of this but the thing is that i don't really wear mustard colored sweaters or cardigans anymore like that's just not my style anymore so i was just wondering what i should do with this huge thing um and this is a, a hundred percent highland wool i believe from nipix palette um so what i ended up doing was reskeining everything so they come in balls um so i ended up making them into regular skeins and then I just dyed him in my dye pot. I'm like I'm a yarn dyer I could re-dye this so that's what I did looks sorry the light's kind of weird huh but um yeah, it's pretty accurate it's like this rust rust color it's almost like my rust colorway um it's very close to that but obviously it's more yellow toned because they're the base color was that bright mustard yellow that you saw earlier so i'm planning on making some like cabled sweater out of this when i reskeined it i put i reskeined it holding two together so i didn't have to reskein so many balls of yarn and i knew that i kind of wanted like a dk light worsted weight kind of thing so yeah these are all two yarns held together skeins um so these will be something something cable um but yeah so it's not really like acquisition but it's like a newly newly made thing and then another thing that's like not new acquisition like i didn't buy it but i made it is my first bat so I do have like, I did get a new um, drum carter and I wanted to try it out. And I haven't been able to spin, unfortunately, as much as I want to because I've been so busy. But I did have time to make this bat and it's like pretty big. I just used like whatever fiber I had in my stash. Um, so that's all mixed together. There's some... Um, merino some i believe cordale but yeah it's just this very pastel green blue purple color so uh, i have to try to like spin it sometime i'm gonna see and yeah it's like kind of light like it, it the color's pretty pretty accurate it's very um not pastel-y but really light I don't know why it came out this way but I guess that's how the fibers were so I, I'll have to test it out and see how it spins up but yeah so this is a bat that I made I think it's about like 60 grams or so but I'm excited to use this sometime And then another acquisition so I've been a really big fan of Erin from Coast to Coast Yarn Co for a very long time I've known about her shop since even before I started my shop um, she's a really big inspiration she dyes beautiful colorways and <clears throat> excuse me and I wanted to purchase her yarn before I left from the US but I knew that I kind of had to stop myself from buying stuff because or else I'd have to carry it all the way over here to Japan so I was like 
maybe I'll find a chance to buy it internationally. But her yarn came into a Japanese online um, yarn shop called Yarnaholic. And when I saw that, I was like, this is my chance. So I immediately jumped on that. So I got some of her yarn. So I got two skeins of, this is Earth Day Every Day on her twist sock base. 100% merino two ply. It's a little blown out here, but it is so beautiful. I love her colorway so much. There's like some blue specks. It's mostly this like light army green kind of olive green and then it's got some browns. It's totally my kind of thing. And then I also got one skein of her moral morel colorway. I think it's like a mushroom. One of her mushroom colorways. Um, it's just this very grungy, light grungy warm brown. It's got some purples in it, which I think is really beautiful. Um, this is on her classic TK base. It's 100% merino four ply. Um, I know I want to make um, something stripey. One of, I don't remember what the pattern's name was, but because um, I'm still like on the fence of what pattern, but I want to hold this together with my matcha colorway. And make like something stripey. I think that'd be really cute as stripes together. And then um, I'm not really sure what to do with this guy. I was thinking a summer top but I think I need another skein if I wanted to do that. So maybe something I kind of considering like helical striping for this one to kind of make um, to have enough yardage to make like a top because I think it would look really good with my um, Like with Bramble, again, my favorite. Like Bramble just looks so good with everyone. This is like a kind of stubby skein, but you can kind of see how they look together. So yeah. Erin's shop is amazing. You could find her on Coast to Coast Yarn Co. on Instagram. You could see all her wonderful colorways. Like, it is so good. It is so good. It is so nice to see them in person so it's my only yarn acquisition okay let me check my notes mm. okay oh oh a couple of other acquisitions that is crafty but not yarn um they're project bags actually so my first let me scooch this over somewhere. My first um, acquisition is from the wonderful Alex from Alex Collins Designs. This is her little note card. She wrote me a lovely note as well, which was so nice of her. Um, so I purchased her limited edition... Um, project bag i forget what the celebration was for sorry alex but um this is the project bag this is her sweater bag sweater size project bag i believe so it's pretty big as you can see it'll definitely fit a sweater um in here i think i'm gonna put my merit my um merit in here once it starts getting a little bigger but um it is so beautiful. The quality is so good. And then it came with her limited edition print. Has the label of her limited edition. And then she also included this little like note notes notebook note packet. Just empty stuff. Um yeah, which is really nice. I'm always looking for notes, notebooks. Um, again, this is Alex Collins Designs. She also has a wonderful YouTube podcast, video podcast that she posts on um, with her makes. She makes lovely, lovely projects, and I'm always watching her videos for inspiration. So thank you, Alex. I love it so much. Um, 
yeah oh it's so nice i think this is my first proper knitting project bag like i i always just use um like tote bags like this is just like a regular tote bag i found on etsy like 10 years ago maybe like eight years ago really long time ago maybe in high school so like i just use tote bags so this is my first well no i lied i have that fox knitting project bag so this is my first like big project bag so i'm really glad i was able to support a small business support one of my lovely youtube buddies so thank you alex it's quite lovely very exciting has a drawstring closure it's very sturdy and thick the canvas is lovely but yeah so very excited about that put that to the side and then i also have let me gather it really quick so a while back i showed off this um acquisition this is where I keep all my notions, my notions pouch. This is from Northern Willow Co. Morgan. Um, she contacted me and asked if she could send me some stuff that I could review for her. Um, she hand makes all of her bags and she also hand stamps these designs on there, which I think is super cool. And it's what drew me to this um, pouch in the first place so she sent me over some stuff so I can show you really quick well the first thing she sent was in the package was um, these like note cards now let me just open them up for you so there's note cards there's art prints and then there's also bags and tote bags so she sent me the, these like nature postcard it comes with like a little brown envelope too there's the bee a mushroom and a little fern leaf so these are all um hand stamped and they're all really lovely and the paper is really good quality i love like how that i don't know if you could tell but they're not completely white they have some colorful specks in it which i really love um, so I have these, and then she also included this hand-stamped art print. Let me just open it up. This art print, which is really beautiful. It is, again hand stamp which is I think kind of crazy like I don't know I don't know how you do that so she hand carved and hand stamped it um and this really lovely like textural paper um and then my favorite part so I really love this like I don't know like mod 80s looking pattern like this these little squigglies um so she sent me this tote bag and I can't believe that it's hand sewn, but it's really sturdy and it's this lovely pink, blush pink color and it has that hand stamped pattern that I really love and it's really good quality. It's perfect and obviously I'm using it as a project bag. This is, this has my um, color quadrant top in it. And it's like the perfect sweater size project bag for me but obviously I've also used this to go out to like the post office and stuff because it does hold a good amount of stuff in it um I'm so thankful that Morgan reached out to me and so grateful that she sent me all these things and um she also told me that if you were interested you could use a coupon code cozy cardigans 20 um, I'll link her shop in my bio, um, not in the bio, in the info bar below. Um, you could use that discount code to get, I believe, I mean, the, it says Cozy Cardigans 20, so I'm guessing it's 20% off of her shop, her Etsy shop, and it's just so nice to support somebody, another small business who's so passionate about her craft, um, 
yeah all her stuff is really good quality they're perfect for knitting i'm not sure if she's a knitter but all her like totes and pouches work really well for knitting or crafting if you were looking for a, like a notions pouch like i was it just ended up working perfectly like it's the perfect size it holds on my tins i use altoids tins holds like my row counter holds my spinning gauge sorry my memory card got full so i just but um i was saying it, it like fits everything so thank you morgan thank you so much again you can use the coupon code to get a discount in her shop it is so lovely um yeah that's i think that's it for crafty stuff if you're interested in books stick around i'm just gonna go through it kind of quickly because i have read quite a few books since i've last talked to you but oh uh, before you leave all crafty people um who's not well i guess if you're not interested in books you wouldn't really care to hear this but i do have i recently just started a little book club on discord called the big little book club we are currently reading we have always lived in the castle by shirley jackson it is a reread for me there's quite a few people who haven't read it and are reading it for the first time that are in there it's also just a space to share your makes so um there's like a chat to talk about what you're making right now what you're knitting crocheting whatever um and then also to talk about the book at the same time so it's just a really nice place to get together and to hang out with people who like both of those things so discord link is in the link down below um come join it's really fun um we are currently again discussing books and knitting and crocheting and whatever but we are also kind of throwing out suggestions for the june book club pick so um yeah come join if you have something you want to read next month let us know um, anyone and everyone is welcome so even if you want to join and just kind of read along but not talk that's totally okay too um you don't have to chat in order to be part of the book club like it's totally fine to lurk around so um <clears throat> you're welcome to do that so that's what i'm currently reading um i'm also currently reading apart from that i'm currently reading northwood by maurice mayher major not sure how to say her last name but it's a prose poetry book and I haven't read a poetry book in quite a long while but this is very good. I'm kind of taking it slow because it is poetry and I kind of want to chew over all her words. She does write beautifully and it is has been a really nice kind of calming book but also it's very painful like it's about um loss and it's about um love and the pain that comes with sometimes um and yeah it's just a very raw very good book poetry book so i do recommend that still currently reading it and i also wanted to share some high rated books well three three top three books that i've read since i've last talked to you maybe um one i literally just finished listening to it i listened to the audiobook version of watch over me by nina lacour and i'm looking down because my notes are here but um watch over me by nina lacour and um i haven't i have heard of her the author before but i haven't read any of her books it's my first book i'm reading by her or i listened to by her and oh my gosh it was so good um her writing style is so so good it just flows so nicely and also the plot and the storyline it's kind of um magical realism ish but not really like if you um 
usually read literary fiction. You don't really read fantasy. You don't really read anything like with um, supernatural fantasy things to it. This might be a good book for you anyways because the um, fantasy aspect is used in such a way where like not that it's subtle, it is a major part of the story, but it's not like they're in a different world, they're, you know, in a different universe or anything like that. Um, so it's about a girl who grew up in the foster care system and then she um, graduates high school, she's 18, she finds a job working at a very remote farmhouse taking care of other foster kids who live there. It's kind of like a foster home. Um, there's like a little schoolhouse for the kids to learn in while they live on the farm. And um, she becomes a little teacher there. A little teacher. She becomes a teacher there. And um, it's about her and about these foster kids um, learning how to live and um, grow after their trauma and um, the thing is is that there's ghosts on the farm that's the magical part of it um, but I don't know it was just like really like the atmosphere was so nice like rural farm near the ocean um, slow living type of vibe but also the backgrounds behind these characters and behind the main character is so sad and tragic but also they're trying to grow from it and trying to move on from this thing that has caused them so much pain and um yeah def definitely shed a few tears while I was dying yarn yesterday but not ashamed. Um, so if you're looking for something that's heart-wrenching but also like so atmospheric, um, definitely recommend that book. Gave it five stars. Um, another book that I really liked was Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin. I think I gave this four stars. I listened to this as an audiobook as well. Um, I listen to a lot of audiobooks because I dye yarn all the time, I, so I'm just like listening to something or other um, as I dye yarn. But um, Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin. This is more of a magical realism, like um, has more fantastical elements to it than Watch Over Me did. But this one is also really weird. Fever Dream explains it perfectly um it's it's weird but in a really cool way like the plot moves forward very quickly um it's a mystery like you don't know what's going like just like the character is trying to figure out what's going on right now she's in a coma and she's talking to this boy and you don't know who he is or why he's there and she doesn't know why she's in this coma and what's happening um, so you kind of go back in time with her to not go back in time literally, but she tries to recount what has happened, um, and what will happen pretty much. So <clears throat> fever dream is a fever dream and, um, I highly recommend it as well. There are, yeah, again, there's like more fantastical, uh, fantasy kind of elements to it, but it is yeah, so it's, I, I don't know, it's like, I love books where it's like literary fiction, but there's like fantastical elements to it. So this is another one of those books. Um, and then another book that I really liked was The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. Um, this is a horror novel, but also literary fiction. Like these are all, I guess now that I think about it, these are all kind of like not similar I want to say but like the same kind of vibe like literary fiction with elements of fantastical things stuck inside of them um to further the plot kind of thing so this is a horror novel um it follows these group of young Native American men who um has done something 
in their past where they're young and stupid kids kind of pretty much and then you jump into their adult life and the um, repercussions of this event has followed them into their adulthood and now they're kind of paying for the price and um, there is like a creature who's stalking them you don't know what it is you don't know who it is um, and then you kind of find out throughout the novel um, in the beginning, I kind of, the beginning was pretty good. The middle was a little slow going, I want to say, but if you push through to the end, it really just kind of picks up and snowballs and then you're just like, what just happened? So I do recommend that novel. It's a horror novel, so there are some like graphic details in it. So if you're not comfortable with, um, graphic details of people dying I don't think you there isn't so much of it in here but again it's a horror novel so take what you will um just be aware of that um to me it wasn't too scary it was more so the um suspense building kind of for me the suspense was pretty good um but also I kind of have like a high horror status kind of thing like that's all I watch I only watch horror movies like I don't really get scared of horror the horror genre so much anymore so maybe it is a bit scary there is a creature so that's probably pretty scary um I ended up giving it four stars I was gonna give it only three while I was in the middle of it because I was just like so over it <laughs> and then the ending came and I was like okay four stars so yeah those are the three books that I've kind of that have kind of been on my mind lately I have read more um I don't know if you would be interested but let me know if you'd be interested in like a monthly book wrap-up kind of video because I, I know I've read more than I want to say I've read more than 10 books and I also read a lot of manga I just don't really talk about it here because um I don't know I, I feel like it's a very niche kind of thing and then I feel like it doesn't really make sense to put all this book stuff in this video where it's more more about the knitting so let me know if you are interested in seeing like a monthly book wrap up where I talk pretty much about the books instead because I kind of just save like the good stuff for this video because I don't want to end up talking about this for like 30 more minutes so um so yeah that's that's it oh my gosh <laughs> I'm so thirsty um so not used to talking this much um thank you so much for joining me thank you so much for sticking around if you've made it this far um let me know if you want that book video let me know what you're reading let me know what you're knitting or making and um please join the book club if you are so interested um we would love to have you um it literally just started this month so um it's been really fun to just be able to pop in and talk about what we're reading and what we're knitting and just like in like a little club that's open apart from Instagram because Instagram like it's really hard to kind of just like talk in the comments section of a post you know so this is like a really nice space to just be able to hang out um so yeah you all are welcome um yeah thanks for being here I'm gonna I'm gonna go eat lunch now um again thank you thank you for if you've purchased my yarn last update thank you so much um, follow me on Instagram if you want to see more info about the next update. I'll be posting about it sometime soon. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll see you next time. Bye.